Hey guys, it's Grandmaster Mac Molnar back with another video here. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the uh, Two Nights Attack and also a little bit of the fried liver. Um, tasty, tasty little side dish. <clears throat> um, so, without further ado, let's just get right into it. So, this is going to be a counterpart to the um, the Italian game. So, it's, it stems from that opening, which starts like this. And if you've watched some of the videos at this point uh, in the series, then you, I'm sure you. Uh, very familiar with the um, initial sequence here. <clears throat> um, so this move brings brings out the um, the typical Italian game, but the two knights the 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 two knights I think it's just the two knights attack begins with black starting with these moves here, <clears throat> and this opening definitely has some some different characteristics compared to the other Italian game variations. Uh, the 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 Potential downside of this move is that it does block the queen from controlling uh, this square here. So in in the uh, Juco piano and traditional Italian game variations, when the bishop is brought out to here, black never really has to worry about early attacks with knight g5, trying to hit this pawn on f7. Uh, mainly because, let's say, both sides just play some regular moves here. Um, black usu is usually in time to just castle here, protect this pawn, and keep everything under control. <clears throat> so uh, after knight f6, you know, we're going to we're going to dive into this move and explore explore how it goes and talk about some of the important variations here. And for you know, this this is just this is a line that's that gives people trouble from from uh, kind of uh, newer levels all the way up until uh, the most advanced levels, this, this still gets seen and it's becoming more popular. It's getting a resurgence, if you will. Uh, it was very popular back um, in the uh, earlier days of chess. And now, you know, for a while it had been kind of neglected and thought that this this moving the, the, uh, the same piece twice here with the knight was was a little bit too much of a... Um, maybe, maybe white was taking too many liberties with this move. But it's become more popular and it's, it's uh, coming back in style. So the... Of course, the threat is to take here with the uh, with the knight. And one thing I've seen at some some newer levels of chess is that when when someone defend or when someone attacks a piece like this, the the automatic automatic instinct is to defend it. But unfortunately, in this position, Black doesn't really have any convenient way to defend the pawn. The only piece that can help guard f7 is the queen. But this you know this just leads to a, a pretty bad position here if Black were to uh, defend it like this. White should, white should take here with the bishop, and after black moves their king, they can retreat. Uh, the, the white's already up a pawn here. They threaten knight f7 with a fork, so this is a big disaster. Um, yeah, the queen can't take, of course, because uh, knight takes, and then yeah, white's white's coming out way ahead in this this exchange here. Um, <clears throat> so that leaves black with with needing to find a different option. So. At this point, Black has several choices. Uh, the first one is just to interfere, to prevent this bishop from attacking f7. Whoops, I don't mean to <laughs> get the knight involved there for Black, but yeah. So um, this is, I think this is Black's best option, but there is a second approach. So considering that, that Black does not really have a way to defend this pawn, um, they can interfere. The only other thing they can really do is counterattack, just try to create a a bigger problem for white and that is typically done with this move uh, this is known as the the Traxler counter gambit and it's a very ambitious approach from black it's definitely exciting and potentially just leading to a wild game um, and at first you might be wondering like what what is black up to here how can how can this bishop move possibly justify allowing white to just capture here and make a fork it looks like that's leading to a massive gain of material for white but it's actually not so simple and if white were to play this move black has a nice sacrificial idea here with um, <clears throat> bishop f2 if white were to take black will capture here and without kind of bogging you down with tons and tons of variations black gets a very strong uh, counterplay here they have a number of different queen moves they can use at, uh, at their disposal here to um, start to initiate threats on the king. And as far as I know, this is not supposed to be leading to any kind of advantage for white. 
and it's best to just avoid this if you're playing the fried liver. Um, black could could uh, entertain playing this way. So if you if you like some very ambitious approaches and like to counterattack with black and go for the win, this this opening might be a good fit for you. <clears throat> um, white could also try king f1. I think um, one thing that that black often does in in these lines is well they'll have to move their queen and if if white takes. In a lot of cases, I think they're, they're going for counterplay uh, stemming from d5. And some of the thinking here is that in the upcoming positions, they might be able to play something like knight d4, um, bishop g4, and create some, some powerful attacks. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I'm going to go into what I think is the best uh, option here for white, which is to take. So I think white should capture here. Um, gain a tempo on the king, and black will advance their king up to e7, and yeah, at this point, black has the threat to play h6, so white should <clears throat> react to that, and there's been some different recommendations here, depending on maybe what resource you, you, you trust, but I think this, this move from white is actually a pretty good one, and I would recommend this, and the idea here is that uh, this bishop overprotects the e4 pawn, so if black plays something like h6 at a good moment, knocking the knight back, then this, this e4 pawn is going to be under control. Also, I think that this bishop's helpful in undermining black's center, being able to capture this knight at a, at a good moment and eliminate some, some protection in the center here. So what, what black will usually do, I think, is uh, rook f8, and this uh, guards f7, it prevents the fork, and it definitely eyes this f2 pawn which has been a constant target and is uh what black is is aiming their pieces towards so white should castle here a very natural move just over protect this pawn get the king safe and black will play something like d6 here opening up this bishop and maybe setting up a move like bishop g4 or maybe h6 in the near future and here what i think white should do is play c3 so <clears throat> over the next few moves white is planning to go um usually knight f3, then d4, block out that bishop, and then it becomes nice to have this bishop here for white. They can capture and then maybe open up the center at a good moment. And all, all of white's pieces, I think, make a lot of sense here. So it's definitely a really interesting opening, but this is just kind of the tip of the ice. We're going to want to um, focus too much on this, just give you a nice sense of what, what both sides could do. But uh, let's go back. So this is the, uh, the counter gambit type of approach that black has. So the other main approach that black can take here is uh, d5. And one thing I've mentioned throughout this Italian game series is that this bishop is, is white's most valuable minor piece. They want to keep this, this piece pretty much no matter what. So white should take with, with the pawn, not with the bishop. And now, now black has a choice, and they have many choices here. Um, even some very surprising moves, which might be unexpected, um, which um, I mean b5 by that. Um, this is actually a move that black can play. Uh, knight d4 is a move. <clears throat> knight takes d5 is a very old move and not necessarily the best one. And the main line with knight a5 here. So we're going to go one by one. Let's start with the... Uh, the most, the most obvious one, so knight takes pawn. So this leads to one of the most inf infamous opening variations in all of chess, the fried liver attack, which can start with uh, knight takes f7 here. There is a second good approach for white, which is to go d4, and this is known as the lolly attack. Uh, I think also named after another Italian player. So let's see here. Um, d4 is a good option. I think I'll just focus on knight f7 for now. Um, so this is the classical approach. This is this is known to be quite dangerous for, for black. Black needs to take it. And then in order to, to, to make sense out of giving up this knight, white needs to find a, a nice attacking move here, which brings about a lot of pressure and takes advantage of this exposed king on f7. So white will play queen f3, attacking the king, hitting this, this knight uh, a second time. And... Um, yeah, this opening has caused so many debacles in uh, games I've analyzed among students and um, tournament players, club players. 
uh, black needs to respond with e6. If they don't do this, they're in basically just a lost position. Uh, I have actually seen even some games um, abruptly come to a conclusion after this move. Uh, it looks like maybe if your king's in danger, hiding it could be a worthy idea. But it's just too hidden here, too trapped. After bishop d5, black loses the game. Uh, just pretty much end of story here. After queen d5, take, take, uh, yeah, and then bishop b6, take, over. Uh, an unfortunate finish for black. So this this kind of idea of hiding the king is not an option. Um, so with that in mind, black might be interested in trying to retreat the king, but white um, will take here with an extra pawn, an ongoing attack. Queen f7 mate is a threat, taking here, and then following up with the queen is a threat. Black can't castle. So white's got a, a number of different advantages here, and they're in a... In a a great great shape so um, black should advance their king out to e6 not something i think they're happy to do but it's the the necessary thing to do and now white should continue to just add pressure to this pin and this is going to be a constant theme uh, in the upcoming positions and the second thing that white should be aiming to do here is open up the center um, so knight c3 is normally what gets played it's the best move and black needs to defend this knight so a move like knight b4 is possible, or knight e7. Uh, White's main plan here, either way, is, is trying to set up this move next. In in some, some form, um, they may need to prepare it, and they may need to deal with what black does on the upcoming turns. But in general, they're, they're trying to play this move. Uh, let's see how that could work out. So uh, black could play knight b4 here, and white um, can play this move right now. It would be kind of a very um, ambitious approach, but I, I would recommend just castling. And then in the upcoming turns, you're trying to play this and create an open file in the center, maybe something like rookie one and just continue to exert pressure down the open files. So it can lead to just a very, very difficult position here for black. I think this is uh, a good continuation here. And yeah, I, I think black's, black's in some hot water, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, some, some moves white might, might consider here soon to be something like rook e1 or maybe taking and then playing rook, rook d1 even. Um, but it's just a very, very uh, risky game for black to, to play this way. So um, knight e7 could also get played here. And now white can just start with d4. And one of the obvious points or maybe even not obvious, but just one of the important points of this move would be that if black takes, this file that's opened up towards the king is already very dangerous. White will play queen e4, and after this move, they're regaining the lost material, and this king is going to be an, um, a big problem still. So now the king's driven away from protecting this knight, or it's going to interfere with, with, with um, the queen protecting the knight. For instance, if it goes here, the queen no longer guards the knight, so white can happily take. And this is just a miserable, miserable position for black. They do not uh, want any part of this. So uh, let's go back. Uh, the king could also maybe go back this way, but you know it's going to walk into things like this again, and and black is is in bad shape. So after d4, white's got a very strong initiative. They also could follow up with moves like bishop g5, creating a second inconvenient pin. They're going to castle, bring a rook to the the e file. Um, they may even go bishop g5 and then castle this way, adding even more <clears throat> pieces to these uh, pins in the center. And if you're interested in finding out more about this particular line, you can go over the game between um, Polario and Domenico from, uh, from our library. So this would be a good extra resource here. Um, but yeah, I don't think many people seriously uh, try to make the fried liver attack work for black. It's more just kind of walking into this because... Maybe they haven't seen it before, and it's just a natural move to take. But it does lead to some uh, really risky positions. So let's go over some of the other <coughs> variations here. Um, I mentioned two of the less popular ones, which would be b5 and knight d4. Um, they actually can lead into the same position, and I'll show you what I mean here. Um, if black were to play b5, uh, this, this move might look really mysterious and kind of, kind of strange. What black is hoping for is that white is actually going to take this pawn. 
so that they can follow up with queen d5 here. And this is going to create a double attack. And white is kind of has an awkward decision here. They may not really want to play something like bishop f1 in order to defend it. At least maybe not at this exact moment. <clears throat> um, with the queen centralized at that point, black would have some, some nice initiative. Um, if black if white were to take, this is also really not what white's going for. If, if white were to try to castle here, for example, maybe black will play something like bishop b7. This pressure along the long diagonal here is really uncomfortable. Black can actually maybe kick the knight back and then castle queenside and just kind of throw everything at the white king. And yeah, it's, it's really uh, not the way white wants to play this opening. So b5 definitely has a lot of surprise value. It um, can catch people off guard for sure. And for the players who find themselves in this position with white, it's very, very uh, difficult to find the right move if you haven't seen it before. Practically impossible almost. Um, the right move is to go bishop f1. And I don't think this is most people's instinct here, but if you can kind of reason out what's what's happening here, uh, you have, you know, it, it might make more sense. So what white is going for is actually just to kind of encourage black to play this move. So we saw that uh, in the previous position, it was attacking this, ga uh, gaining a tempo and, and attacking this. Now white actually gets to reverse the situation, play knight c3, uh, hit the queen with a tempo, and then when the queen retreats, white will take the pawn and they will be in nowhere near as much danger. Black will not have the same kind of active play and white will actually be in, in pretty good shape here. Um, for instance, let's say the queen goes here. Now white can take much uh, more prepared to castle at this point and with, with um, kind of equal development, they're not near like in anywhere, in, um, anywhere close to the same amount of risk as before. So this is fine. Usually black doesn't um, go for this. Usually what black will do is they'll go knight d4 in this position. And after c3, um, it can lead to a um, pretty complicated struggle, but one that I think generally white is doing better in. And um, let's go back to knight d4 on the previous turn uh, in this position. So the reason why I say that this can transpose to the variation with b5 is because I think after best play, which is c3 here from white, I think black is probably best off going b5 and then turning it into this, um, uh, the, the exact same position basically. So white should white should actually go bishop f1 again, and then you'll have directly transposed into what we saw earlier. <clears throat> so at this point, um, black usually takes, and this opens up the queen to attack the knight here. White should capture this, black will take. White's going to capture now with check. The king is going to move to d8. This is the best move. And now I think white should castle. So we've kind of entered this, this four sequence here. And yeah, some big changes have definitely occurred. Black's lost the right to castle. Black does have this queen in a nice active position. And if they play bishop b7 coming up, it could lead to a lot of pressure on this long diagonal. Um, so that's what black should do here. They should play bishop b7 and white should play an accurate move here. So this this move might look a little bit strange, but it's actually a good a good choice. So white should play queen f3. And the reason why I say it might look a little strange is because it's directly kind of walking into this this um, potential discovered attack and um, maybe maybe feels like white's putting their, their queen in harm's way here. But it's actually a little inconvenient for black at this point because this knight can't easily move and white has some maybe some extra so choices that at their disposal here maybe something like queen f7 with a threat of checkmate on f uh, d7 here i don't think that that's not too relevant in most variations but something like queen h3 is also maybe a move that white can play to regain some time if it ever uh, you know if they ever find themselves getting discovered attacked and um feel like they they, they might lose a tempo or something like that so white, white does get uh, some extra options here. Also, white has moves like d3 um, playable at this point um, in the upcoming moves, maybe to make a discovered attack and gain some time. So it's not so simple. Um, pretty complicated position, but after the move rook b8, setting up moving this knight somewhere, white can capture the pawn. And I think in general, this is working out for white. 
white's plan is going to be to play d4 here and unfortunately black doesn't really have any particularly um, dangerous discovered attacks um, for instance maybe you know knight e3 might look kind of challenging here and it's definitely an important move but white has this under control after playing queen h3 here luckily for white they don't have to worry about too many of these issues on uh, g2 or f1 because this threat of checkmate here completely uh, neutralizes everything black is trying to do and if black's not careful you know their their knight's still under attack here of course maybe you could capture it either way but um, just trying to point out that maybe a move like c6 creating some kind of counterattack to the bishop or you know preventing checkmate wouldn't really be you know wouldn't be good enough for black at this point white can white can at least take and they have everything under control they're a couple pawns ahead maybe taking this way could be better but you know either way this isn't what black's looking for um, so black might take trying to get rid of the the uh, <clears throat> the mating threat by trading but after this white white actually white is ahead here and you know they're up one pawn this this attack from black is is uh kind of lost its its um its power something like d4 here and then if the knight were to come back you can white can maybe think about exchanging it with a move like bishop g5 so in general white white has things under control here and um even though it's a very ambitious approach from black and if if white is not uh prepared they will they will have a hard time finding all these moves um, objectively, I think this line leads to a, a slight advantage, at least for white. So, you know, if, you, if you're interested in trying this with black, I, I could absolutely see this leading to some good results. But um, against a very well prepared opponent, uh, I think you'll find some better results using the main line, which is uh, knight a5 <coughs> over here. So, at this point, after white had taken the. Um, I think the most recognized move is knight a5, and white's got some got some uh, choices at this point. I'm going to recommend bishop e5. This is the traditional move, and at this point, um, black should most likely just play c6, blocking the check, and after white exchanges, now white has the choice to retreat back to um, d d3, e2, um, a4 is not really recommended. And there is even a um, fourth approach here with queen f3, um, creating a, a possible pin on the rook here. So this is also, um, yeah, a very interesting move. Um, yeah, bishop a4 tends not, well, I think it tends to get some bad results here after h6, knight f3, and then e4. So this is a very common way for black to get counterplay in this line. Um, in basically any of these... Um, retreats with uh, the bishop and the problem here is that this bishop is very loose on a4 and one thing that that white would like to do is is play something like um, knight e5 and then hopefully plant the, the pawn here to support it and if that happens white can get a good position but in this position black can play queen d4 and this this ruins this ruins white's day here because um, both of these pieces were under attack and um, yeah, one way or the other, black, white's got to try to um, save one of them. So making a capture on c6 makes sense. Uh, if they take with a knight, though, then black can capture here. So that's going to uh, win, a, win a piece. It's also going to guard this knight, which was under attack. And strangely enough, after bishop takes, uh, knight takes, and then queen takes, this knight, even though it's kind of centralized and advanced, it's going to get trapped after queen c5 absolutely nowhere to go and if if white tries to desperado the knight get another another pawn for it um black is winning here even though white has three pawns it's just um a miserable position for white black has a number of different op open files um the bishops are going to be really strong um something like bishop g4 might be a threat in the upcoming positions white has literally no development at all so this is a position that should be avoided by at all costs by white and yeah let's let's see what uh would be some better options for white um so queen f3 is a move that i mentioned earlier uh, in this position and yeah this is actually a lot less explored than some of the other approaches 
Although, I've never been too big a fan of this move, to be honest, because it feels a little strange to commit the queen to f3 at this point. Um, and actually, black does well to just avoid uh, what this move is, is, is setting about here, uh, which is adding an extra attacker to this pawn. So black can actually just um, play bishop b7, for example, let white take. And yeah, a position like this is going to give black a ton of compensation. The bishop pair is really valuable here. Black's going to castle in the upcoming um, position and then gain some counterplay. Um, maybe in a future video, I'll explore this a little bit more, but I, I'm going to um, go back to the main lines, main, main lines here. So um, just to give you a, a little um, finishing up on, on this whole video, we're going to talk about um, bishop d3 and bishop e2 in this position. So bishop d3 is uh, the modern main line. Bishop e2 was is more of the classical approach, and um, for for yeah probably for almost as long as the uh, two knights has been in opening, uh, this was considered the best move for for white. And what white's hoping to do is is kind of um, re reestablish a grip in the center here with moves like d3, knight c3, castle, and then if they can, you know. Kind of reach a reasonable position up a pawn they, they'll be in great shape so black really needs to create some counterplay immediately uh, what i would recommend from black's point of view is to play h6 and after knight f3 to play e4 after knight e5 to play bishop c5 and i think these positions are absolutely fine for black no problem and yeah the immediate threat is is actually just to play queen queen d4 hitting the um, the knight and, and the pawn on f2, and black gets good counterplay here. Uh, I should also mention that knight h3 is a, a really interesting approach that white could try here. Um, I think black has a number of different options here. Um, black has even tried g5, um, just trying to just exploit this, this strangely positioned knight on the side. Um, some people have captured, but if you just develop here with um, sensible bishop move i think it's reasonable as well and this th these these positions are much less explored but are an interesting option kind of for both sides um but let's let's go over the uh the, the modern main line here with bishop d3 uh, i think hikaru nakamura was the one to originally make this uh, a popular variation he uh he used this i think in the final round of a u.s championship against josh friedel he won a nice game and after that, it sort of set this variation in motion. Um, <clears throat> one of the, the main points of this, this bishop move is that it's now much harder for black to achieve that similar type of counterplay with, with pawn to e4, uh, mainly because this, this knight can retreat back to, to e4 if it's attacked. That will be what white should do. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to um, kind of handle it like we saw in the previous variation. So now h6 actually isn't really the best, best approach for black. White's going to go here. And black doesn't get quite the same type of counterplay anymore. Um, and note that black really doesn't want to be exchanging here. Um, white actually has this, this great bishop now. Um, this knight on a5 is kind of off balance here on the side. Black can't play f5 and generate the kind of counterplay they'd like because queen h5 is going to gonna strike here with a double attack. So overall, um, yeah, this bishop d3 poses some, some different challenges for black. But there's a number of different approaches here. Um, knight d5 is, is considered probably the best one. And then the thinking is that uh, the knight can head over to f4 at a good moment. Also, there's now a tempo gained on this knight uh, on g5 here. So instead of doing it with h6, now the, the best approach is with maybe knight d5 or a different type of knight move. And yeah, it just leads to a very, very interesting game. Something like knight f3. Um, and then black usually plays bishop d6, protecting this pawn. And white will castle here. And black has a few approaches they can take here. They can go knight f4 and just immediately try to capture the bishop here. Or they could even just castle and maybe plan something like rookie 8 with, with some compensation. Or even f5 is, a, is another interesting approach here. Um, so, yeah, I think this is a good summary of, of, of the, you know, the state of being here in the, uh, the fried liver. 
of course, you know, a complicated opening, opening like this, you could you could probably make a video that's two, three hours long, but I don't think that would be totally uh, helpful for everyone. So I'm just gonna, gonna uh, wrap it up here. And hopefully this was instructive for you and feel like it added something to your knowledge on these lines. And it's this is just such a classic opening, a lot of fun for both sides to try it out. And um, yeah, like and share this video or come check out more videos at Grandmaster Mac. And uh, I'll see you next time.